stereotype. I am like this, thereby this is my motorcycle. It's going to be the other way around. I want to ride something and thereby I need a motorcycle, not the motorcycle deciding the riding habit of a customer. Third is legacy free. There's no legacy that my dad wrote it, my grandfather wrote it, so I have to ride it. So something which is unscripted into a new genre altogether. A motorcycle with a no known master. And that is previous Ronin. And that is the new motorcycle we are going to introduce today. You'll have to hold your breath before we tell you a little bit more about it before the bikes roll out onto the stage. So this is the brand we are launching today, the TVS Ronin. So it's not a cruiser, it's not a sport, sports bike, it's not a classic, but a motorcycle with a category of its own for those improvists uh, to live their own unscripted life. So we're getting into the genre of unscripted. And close your eyes, I'm sure most of you would like to do this in your life, in various walks of life. And that's what this motorcycle will bring together. So when we're creating this whole brand of TVS Ronin, we created a world of TVS Ronin around it. As you saw Sudarshan speaking about, it's not only about motorcycle, but about motorcycling. And the modern retro with a category and a lifestyle of its own, where the only rule is to have none. There is no rule for this motorcycle. And to create a holistic set of experience, uh, which no other motorcycle provides today for these improvists, we have a complete set of online and offline uh, footprints, which includes cult, that is culture, lifestyle, and travel, a configurator for its personalization, merchandise and accessories for a unique storytelling and a new age connected technology. So we'll have a merchandise EV, please. that Ronin will have its own set of merchandise which is absolutely branded with Ronin so the consumer can absolutely look out in style in public. So on top of it, we are bringing first time a configurator where you can choose from various set of accessories to make your motorcycle own. And the first time we will be putting it online and you can really, really personalize your motorcycle Ronin. On top of it, as you know, as a company, we have always stayed ahead in terms of technology. Yet again, we have a smart connect which not only ensures safety and comfort with the smart X-Connect. Like tour mode is there, there's got ride mode, it's got voice and ride assist, turn-by-turn -turn navigation for effortless riding, and telephony, and an auxiliary dashboard for tech-powered convenience. Also, this dashboard you can really, really personalize for your own self. It's like what you see in cars, you're going to see probably in Ronin going forward. Apart from that, we bring TVS Arrive app, and uh, with an impressive technology so that you can write your own story. So guys, this is the world of Ronin. Now I will invite my colleague, uh, our Babu, to take you through Ronin in more details before we roll out the motorcycle. Yeah, our Babu, can we have on the stage? <laughs> Good evening. Let me extend a warm welcome from my side. Thank you, Vimal, for introducing us to the world of TVS Ronan. I would like to walk you through the highlights of the passionate engineering that has gone into creating the unscripted motorcycle, TVS Ronan. Let's look at it in three parts. The engine, which is the powertrain, the vehicle, and also the electronics and controls. 
The engine is a 66 by 66 square engine, 225.9 cc power, torque, but what matters is the distinctness. The distinct characteristics, a very strong low and mid-range torque, a unique flat torque, as flat as it can get, and a highly focused engineering that has gone into looking at the drivability. We have driven every mile, every kilometer of the initial stages, looking for the distinct characteristics that has been the theme of engineering. And it's also highly refined and excellence in comfort. On engine, there is a lot that you can do to make the ride more enjoyable, not only the deliver the power and torque, but also the characteristic of the engine. It can be offering a lot of comfort when you want to go for a long ride. And to top it up, the unique tonal character from the exhaust that adds up to the characteristic run-in engine. Let's look at some of the details. The cow that you can see here offers so much of low and mid-range torque that keeps you going, and that comes out of a detailed engineering of a lot of bits. What you can see here is three, four pieces out of that. The wave dynamics on the intake track, typically a long track can give us high torque, but the dynamics matters a lot. The dynamics matching with the intake and exhaust supported by a high acceleration cam that adds up to the dynamic optimization of the fuel flow, the air flow, and the combustion that happens inside. To get all of that throughout the wide range, particularly in the lower end, the shell bearings are used with hydrodynamic film for lubrication, which makes the crankshaft drive so free, so ready at the low speeds to deliver friction-free torque output. What it matters to the rider, all of that, it's best suited for any terrain, also on the gradients. Let's take a look at the gradients a little later. There will be less need to gear shift, so we keep going. And low revs, that adds up to the smooth and pleasurous ride. One of the fine detail in getting the combustion right is how you target the fuel spray. The fuel injection is something that will look everything the same, but the details matter a lot. The twin wall intake, the way the port design is done, a lot of simulation is done to get the characteristic twirl. The fuel flow inside, the way the automation happens, and the swirl and tumble, the way they would complement each other, is all done to get that unique characteristic torque and power delivery, and making also the combustion very, very smooth. The result, it's unscripted. There is no reason to compare or talk of scoring anything or winning a race. But then as a biker, I would like to know, where do I get, what do I get from the run-in? So we just looked at certain typical day-to-day -day demands when I'm on a bike, be it a 0 to 60, be it a pass-by acceleration on a highway, I need to slow down and again pick it up in the fourth gear, in the fifth gear, be it 30 to 80 kph or 50 to 80 kph. It just goes effortlessly, goes ahead. With the opening of the throttle, it just instantly responds. Another important parameter which all of us as bikers know is when I get into the traffic, I would like to be a bit lazy. I would like to shift gears less. I would like the bike to keep going. So the target, one of the engine engineering target is to get the third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear speeds as low as possible so that there is less need for shifting. And with the throttle opened, it just responds and goes. And biking is all about going on the weekends, going for long rides, and also on the mountains. So uh, gradability, gradability on higher gear is also an additional target we took. We wanted to make sure that in third gear, run and will climb the fastest on a 10 degree gradient, not just a small gradient. So these unique characteristics are also uh, added with a unique signature, the run and sound character. This was dialed in looking into the fine details. One example here, what you can see is a unique oil damping is used to quieten the camshaft when the engine gets hotter. Typically, as the bores expand, you get a characteristic sound. And to get that characteristic sound to the tune that we wanted, we innovated an oil damping to get the noise characteristics altered. Whether it's a guitar or it's a drum, it's all about the structure, the vibration that finally translates into noise. So the Crankcase, the cover, the stiffness is all tweaked to get the target sound character that we had in mind to create that unique unscripted sound character. High inertia flywheel, 
the inertia not only helps to get the idle low and stable but also it gets that characteristic sound whether it is low speed grunt or as I wait at the signal for the word go. So the key five elements are tabled here which are compared against what typically is available in the industry today and uh, those highlighted three are something that we added as an innovation to get that unique characteristic for the run-in sound. It is like composing, so 28 different noises. These noises are in different conditions as well. It's not just about the source alone, but different riding conditions. Also the conditions in which I may be a rider, I may be a friend standing nearby. So, so much of detailed engineering was requiring dialing in individual parameters to get what we targeted as overall unique character of run-in. And I think you should more listen to the bike than to me to hear that. To add to the fun of riding, it's also important to get that comfort. So the power is there, the talk is there, I keep going, but I would also like to have the leisure ride more a pleasure than anything that's punishing me. So the thermal comfort and the ease of control was another topic that we took up. The oil cooler is enhanced, O3C technology is put in, and the cover, it's a unique design that has gone into two layers that helps both for the thermal comfort and also for the sound characteristics that run-in comes with. And the assist and slipper clutch adds to the joy of controlling as and when I need, whether it's a partial slip, whether it's a shift down, shift up, all of that. So here again, a comparison to say things that are done new and different to get that unscripted characteristics. This engine has gone on to a vehicle. That's also something that is having unique design details, engineering, that makes it stand out of the crowd. The theme has been a pleasure ride. A pleasure ride is one where I don't race with anyone. I'm not here to win a race. I'm not here to check my lap timing. I'm not going to be scoring any points, but I just want to ride. Ride wherever I want to, go wherever I want to. It's my ride, it's unscripted. So what it means is planted, but also a precise handling. Planted need not mean that I'm lazy, I don't respond. Control at ease, as I cruise through traffic, as I cruise through highways, any control that I would love, it is at ease. Comfortable, upright posture for long rides, and a great ride comfort in all terrains. That's been the theme with which the whole vehicle engineering has been done. Um, many of you will be familiar with these key engineering parameters that build up a motorcycle on two wheels to stand and do what it does to us, the love and connect that we have. Every parameter was to be explored for a design space which is unexplored. And so we were to look at the conflicts typically that happen in physics as we understand and optimize each of this between the two worlds of being fast, being sporty, have a sprint and also be planted precise and aid me to go for a long ride. To do this, we were to use advanced computer simulation because exploring design space especially where multiple parameters have a lot of seemingly conflicting nature. We were to use this advanced simulation models. It's a 21 degrees of freedom model. Uh, what it means is that nine different block subsystems make up the rider and the bike together as one system which is moving around in this world of gravitational field. And that has 21 different ways of moving. That's what it means, that higher the degree of freedom, that much more the model is complex and that's that much more true to what it happens on the real world. And 15 different, 15 plus uh, road profiles that have been configured in the virtual world. And we explored the complete design space to get into the combinations. For example, the front axle weight. The bike is lighter, as you can see, 160 kilograms. But the front axle weight is more. That gives it its unique characteristics. The wheel size, it's a 17 inch, 110, 70 front. That again gives its unique characteristic combination. We also introduced a wheel offset. We'll see it in the next slide in detail. The wheelbase is also shorter. And that makes the whole bike get that unscripted characteristic of being planted, but also responsive. The way I want, it should ride. It's an all new chassis. It's a synchro stiff technology engineered double cradle split chassis with the mass balancing done with 40 millimeters center of gravity moving forward and the 
wheel offset was something that was leveraged to dial in the right amount of trail without having to get my steering offset more. What happens typically is for a given caster of 27 degrees, if I have to control the trail, I have to move the wheel forward. And when I do that, it moves away from the center of pivot. So the inertia increases, the response comes down. To tweak that, we have used this wheel offset to get that unique characteristics. The structure is generally expected to be stiff, but the stiffness is also not just static, it's also dynamic. In different frequency ranges, the structure responds very differently. So it was important for us to explore the operating frequency range and optimize the overall stiffness of the system along with the chassis and swing arm design. That makes the complete bike get that unique dynamic characteristics and also a very high level of refinement. Where required, we were to explore some of the unexplored ways of damping, altering the transfer functions of vibration to come from the engine to the vehicle to the tactile points to dial in a character that connects with me, that talks to me all in all. The result is depicted here in the form of two graphs. What you see on the left side is how much does the bike respond when there is an external disturbance. The disturbance could be a gush of wind with a heavy vehicle passing by. The disturbance could be a pothole. It could be a, a sudden unexpected uh, road pattern. But run-in doesn't care. It doesn't get shaken up. The green line shows that the run-in gets disturbed the least compared to the other bikes that are out on the road. What you see on the right side is, if something is so planted, then it's difficult for me to move. I need to put a lot of effort, but motorcycle is not for that. Motorcycle should listen to me when I want, and it shouldn't do anything on its own. So that required us to explore the new design space. Here, what you see is a frequency range. The frequency is the frequency at which I control. When I do a planned maneuver, it's a low frequency control. I've already planned, I've thought, I do it. When I have to do an unplanned maneuver, or if it's a mountain road with a lot of windings, then I need to do quick maneuvers. So what you see here on the horizontal axis is whether it's a planned slow maneuver or a high frequency control maneuver. All through the range, the control effort is minimized and the response is quick. So the engineered plantedness is adding with that effortless riding, which is something that's unique to go for long rides and enjoy the precision of response and also the planted feel. It's very important that the suspension is also tuned, not just for comfort, but also for the dynamic characteristics. So TVS Ronin gets upside down, show a front fork with the big piston technology. The big piston offers something unique, instantaneous response, and the damping is so precise. Whatever be the speed we ride, whatever be the kind of road disturbance, the response has to be very precise to get that accurate damping control, so big piston does that. The rear is a monoshock with a gas-filled chamber, and that adds up to the instant response again from the rear. So the tweaking of the damping and its instantaneous response is a choice that we made to get that overall dynamic character without having to compromise on the comfort. So wherever there is a road disturbance, it readily absorbs the shocks and makes the ride comfortable as well as you get the precise steering response. Tire is very critical, as we all know. And uh, we were to design a new tire. The Remora compound was further improved for getting in what we wanted in Ronin and an all-new tread pattern was designed. Block pattern was designed. Looking at each tread block's movement so precisely, and matching it with the rest of the vehicle's character. The ergonomic Economics has been designed, applying scientific principles to look at how human body reacts. We know about the creep. I can hold 10 kg, but I can hold 1 kg for a one hour time. So the creep is something that plays a lot when 
me ride for long distance. It's not only about comfort, it's also about how active I can be. How much can I enjoy the ride? So it's an upright posture that's designed with uh, the scientific principles of our biology to release the back and uh, give us an active upright posture. The seat is designed with the detailing which gives you the segments best width and the comfort and support. The pressure distribution as we can see here at the bottom right, it is engineered to distribute overall with the width of contact that we make. And what it means is when I sit for long rides, one hour or two hours, Over three hours non stop ride, then my blood circulation is not affected. The pressure is distributed uniformly, that gives a lot of comfort. I keep riding and all I need is break for that. But though I don't use it, I need it when I want. So in breaking again, we wanted to get something unscripted. As we keep applying the break, you can look at one number where the force gets multiplied. But actual details said reveals that it is dynamic, it keeps changing as we keep pressing the pedal. In a disc brake, of course, you don't get too much of pedal travel, but even within that, there is a dynamic ratio change. So we worked on tweaking this, a lot of experiments were done to get a character. What you can see in the bottom left is a graph that depicts, as you get the brake on, you want, most of the times you want just mild brake, you want the bike to respond to you, say in the traffic, you just want to touch the brake and keep going. So that response is much higher in the run-in design at the beginning, which means that effortlessly you can get that. But that doesn't mean that when I want a lot of brake, I instantly lock the wheel and the ABS kicks in and then makes the ride unpleasure. So as the progression happens, the ratio is modified in a way that you get a very progressive, quick, effortless braking in a city traffic and the good amount of braking power fully there to explore when you want the full brake. TVS Ronin is also dialed in with ABS ride modes. You get Rhine, you get Urban. It makes hell a lot of difference. I was riding in the Alps recently, and uh, to be honest, I could realize myself how much ABS makes sense, especially if it is raining. It was raining cats and dogs, and on the rain with ABS mode switched over to rain. It was fabulous to ride the bike, and of course, suddenly the rain stops, and you can't get to ride anymore with the ABS on coming in so frequently, and on-the-go changeover of the mode is something that's another big factor that adds up to pushing the engineering and the science to get us what we want, enjoy the limits without having to exert ourselves. 
with so much to write it is very important that we get beautiful looking signature lamp that also lights up the road as much as i would love without having to hurt the other road users so that's the theme of definition for the lighting it's a compact vertical stack up led lamp it's sophisticated bright we'll see in the next slide how much bright the tail lamp is something that's again unique it comes with a solid crystalline light bar when design drives engineering a lot of innovation is demanded the, to make it look the way it looks and function something that adds up to what the design is so we were to innovate on the way the light is generated and thrown on the tail lamp what you see on the run in is a hybrid light emission technology where the led light source has a reflector and also a solid light bar that makes a unique distinct characteristic tail lamp readily noticeable on the road also the turn signal lamp the arrow shaped turn signal lamp is readily noticed here again the led doesn't prick the eyes of the other road users directly we used what is called indirect light emission reflector technology so here the led source is camouflaged for the direct visibility and homogeneous light output is brought by using the lens design very intelligently what it means on the road as i go what on top we see is the low beam and uh, the horizontal axis is the distance to which i get the light thrown the pink or the blue or violet cow is what is the best that's in the segment today and run in gives more light output in the near also it throws far similarly on the high beam as you can see it's far far throwing on to the the road with intensity which is very high where i need to get to see so the other road users are respected but i need my road to be lit i need it to be lit for a long distance since if i have to ride for long in the night at higher speeds so that's the theme and that's what the delivery is let's look at the last part the electronic controls that have gone into making tvs run in again unscripted what we have come up with is an intelligent electronic architecture that has a combination of the engine management system the abs control unit the intelligent smart cluster and first in segment integrated into intelligent starter generator that is another controller added all of them talk to each so there it's a distributed master slave configuration and a scalable software architecture that means as we keep riding as we keep developing i can keep adding up to the features without having to disturb the base so that's a all new software architecture combined with the electronic architecture that is coming in run in first in segment integrated starter that is silent that is instant
out, just change your plans now Only when the sand's down, do I ever stand down Cruise and clear, you lose your fear like I do Move and steer, then choose a gear to glide through R O N I N Ride with me now, let the journey begin I said it's R O N I N Running, it's important, you remember the name I said it's R O N I N Ride with me now, let the journey begin I said it's R O N I N Running, it's important, you remember the name I start up like a cat, got the grace of a mortal, but I can roll like a lion when you're twisting the I keep my lights on All the time it don't matter They run and they scatter My teeth face be shining Like the sun in Nevada No one like me Out in these streets Whether it's open roads Or these steep Mountainous peaks There's no equal You can see my colors unique And I can be whatever you seek Whenever you need I got these nine spoke alloys Spinning with ease Plus you can rest assured Even When you're cruising at speed, who's in the lead? Who's on your feet? Who's on the streets? The tread on my tires never tire. I'm choosing a breeze. Loaded with tech, I got an app on my own, and they can never even step on the path that I roam. If you need me, you can talk to me through your phone. DVS. The one that got the keys to the throne yeah. R O N I N Ride with me now, let the journey begin I said it's R O N I N Running, it's important you remember the name I said it's R O N I N You will get all the time to shoot the bikes. Absolutely. That's so beautiful. <laughs> we request you all to please, you can get seated. Yeah. Thank you. And then we'll have another session. Thank you. So let's, there are three. Uh, variants in it, which is base, base plus and mid. And uh, I'll just take you through the pricing of Ronin, which is really, really attractive. And
It starts with base of 149,000, lightning black and magnum red. These are the two colorways for it. We have base plus, which is delta blue and stargaze black, starting at 156,000. And then we have mid, which is galactic gray at 168,750. Dawn Orange at 170, 750. So you got to choose Ronin right from 149,000 up to 170, 750,000 rupees. So these are all like showroom prices and they come with set of accessories, set of apparels and the whole Ronin world along with you. So guys, let me share the final AV. before we get to shoot this bike in full. So can we have the final AV of the Ronin, please? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen. Whoa, that was something. And now I would like to invite Harini from Corporate Communications to share her views with you. Unscripted hashtag. <laughs> Wow, that was quite a spectacle. 